telling you this budget is killing me. I'm paying for a secretary, her sh chef, her masseuse. She's even got a horse on the payroll. At least the horse takes direction. Just promise me, no more delays. I am doing my best, Jerome. Is Miss Vane ready to play her final scene? I'm sorry, Mr. Bentley, but Miss Vane doesn't feel well. It's a death scene. How well does she need to feel? <laughs> you have got to finish today. Three weeks you're behind schedule. And whose fault is that? If you bought her that new trailer when she asked for it, she wouldn't be feigning pneumonia now. Miss Vane has been seen by three physicians, Mr. Weinstock. They all agree she has a bug. I'm tempted to guess where it is. <laughs> All right, go tell Camille she can have a new trailer. But I want her on the set in five minutes. I'll see if her fever has broken. Now, listen to me, Bobby. This last scene here is very important and very difficult. Miss Vane, your mummy, is dying right there in front of you. Now, here's the hard part. This makes you very sad. <laughs> you even cry. Do you think you can cry when Miss Vane dies, Bobby? It ain't gonna be easy. <laughs> I heard that. What have I said about maintaining some standard of courtesy on my set? And what do we say, Bobby? Sorry, Miss Vane. <laughs> that wasn't very convincing, Bobby. Of course, the same could be said for your entire performance thus far. My mother said that in ten years, you will be a character woman and I'll be a big star. <laughs> Bobby, that is what is called a delusion. Your mother has many delusions. It's because she drinks. <laughs> Mr. Weinstock, she said it again. Oh, really, Gloria? Make sure you keep the little fiend from blocking my light. Gloria, darling. Doreen. Who the hell let her in? Darling. Oh. I was in for my wardrobe test, and I simply had to drop by to congratulate you on finishing Weep Not for the Happy. What a thoughtful gesture, especially since you were so keen to play the part yourself. Oh, wherever did you hear that? Oh, Peter told me. He said, Doreen wants to play your part very badly. And I said, you know, I'll bet she could. <laughs> I think you have things a bit mixed up, dear, but I won't argue I respect my elders. Oh, you should, dear. You're so few of them left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but there's Peter. Oh, how weary he looks. I do hope he gets a nice rest before we start work next week on the Queen and the Scoundrel. No, no, you're misinformed. He's agreed to direct me, and yes, I hear the bugles. Didn't he tell you he changed his mind? What? Oh, dear, I felt certain he'd mentioned it to you. Oh, him. hello, Doreen. Well, Gloria, are you ready for your big scene? You have no idea. <laughs> what, please, is this I hear about you directing Doreen's next picture? Thank you so much, Doreen. I feel awful. And canvas the first mark, please. Peter, you snake. You promised you'd direct my next movie. It's a war movie, dear. I don't think you want to be on a set with me and that many guns. <laughs> well, there's gratitude for you. After all I've done for your career, you had your first hit with me. It was your first hit, not mine. Ha! I was already a major star. Do you have any idea what you'd be if I'd never worked with you? Heterosexual, probably. <laughs> and please, it, please. See, nobody wants to work with you. Oh, shut up, you little toad. I hate, I hate traitors. I am surrounded by traitors and saboteurs. I never want to work with any of you again. One take, Peter. That is all you are getting out of me, do you hear? I don't care if I sneeze after death. And don't you dare block my light. Action. Darling. <laughs> Joey, my angel, are you there? The light is so dim. I'm here, Mommy. His lordship's on his way, my lady. And I've instructed the groom to destroy the horse. What threw you? No, no. You mustn't blame the horse. He's just high-spirited, like my Joey here. Joey, I can't see you. Come closer, my little love. Ah, there you are. <laughs> You mustn't cry. Cut! I did one 
take, Peter. I am sorry, Gloria. The child isn't crying. Now, listen, Bobby. I'll handle this. <laughs> listen carefully. When you have to pretend to be sad, sometimes it helps to remember things that upset you in real life. For instance, if I had to be sad in this scene, I might remember this morning when I pulled into the lot and found that I had accidentally run over and killed an adorable white puppy. <gasps> A little white puppy? You killed Snowflake? <laughs> Roll him! <laughs> ah, there you are. No, no, my angel, you mustn't cry. Weep not for the happy. And Mummy is very happy indeed. What a perfectly glorious day! Oh, I'm alone. <laughs> what a perfectly glorious day! Mother, you're looking very lovely today. And you're looking very warm. Is that chinchilla? Yes, I bought it for the premiere. Do you like it? Well, that depends. How much did it cost me? I didn't ask. But if you call the shop, I'm sure they'll tell you. They're so fond of you there. <laughs> they'll not get that, please. Besides, I had to get something very special to go with this. Take it back, Mother. <laughs> Trust me, the style, the material, you just can't pull it off. If I'm lucky, someone else will. <laughs> well, this should brighten your day. There's a young lady here who says she's your niece. What? Aunt Gloria! Oh, gosh, you're more beautiful than in your pictures. Oh, thank you. Here's the door. <laughs> Don't you recognize me? It's Peggy, your sister's daughter. I don't have any sisters. Louise, 46, Pocatello, waitress. Oh, right. You invited me to come visit. I did what? Yes, I still have the letter you sent to my mother. Here. Dear sis, Hollywood is swell. Just got my first job. Don't ask how. Ha ha. <laughs> come visit any time and bring the baby. I'm the baby. I'll have the nursery made up. I wrote this card 18 years ago. Well, whom have we here? You must be Granny Lily. Good Lord, you're Louise's girl. How wonderful to see you. Call me Granny again and I'll drown you in the pool. <laughs> what should I call you? Auntie Lily. Or Sis, if you like. <laughs> what are you doing in Hollywood? I want to be a great actress. I want to be just like Aunt Gloria. Which is it, child? <laughs> Never mind. We're glad you're here. Where are you staying? Well, I was sort of hoping that I could stay here. Oh, that's out of the question. Gloria. I'm sorry. We'd really love to put you up, but I'm afraid we just don't have the room. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. I'll work her over. You must be famished. Come to the kitchen. It's only ten, so Cook may still be sober. <laughs> Telegram for Miss Vane. More bad news? The worst yet, of course, you probably won't think so. What on earth are you talking about? Dear Gloria, good Lord, it's from Bill. Arriving on flight from Berlin tomorrow at seven. Eager to see you again. Are you free tonight? And what a shame you have the premiere. Don't be silly. It's perfect. I'll bring him along. Oh, dear, this is awkward. Uh, Thelma, call my date and cancel. You're canceling Clark Gable for your ex-husband? Does that surprise you? Why should it? It's the same surefire instinct you showed when you turned down it happened one night so you could star in Congo Holiday. <laughs> what is your problem, Thelma? I thought you liked Bill. I do like Bill. I even like you. It's the two of you together I'm not so nuts about. <laughs> Hello, Gloria Vane here. Uh, thank you. Uh, could you send a car to the airport to pick up someone tomorrow evening at 7 and take him to the Lowe's Byzantium Theater? Bill Wainwright. Oh, of course I can describe him. Uh, he's in his late 30s, 
handsome, but not in an actorish way. Very masculine, but with a certain boyish vulnerability and a kind of romantic, idealistic quality that... Oh, I see your point. All right, the man I'm looking for is uh, 39, 6 foot 1, brownish hair, green eyes, and very broad shoulders. If you're ordering out, dear, get me one. <laughs> Don't be silly, Mother. It's Bill. Bill? Yes, he's coming back, and he wants to see me. Oh, dear. There, didn't I tell you he'd come back? He just needed six years to cool off. <laughs> You have a beautiful kitchen. So I've heard. <laughs> Peggy, come upstairs and we'll find you a beautiful dress to wear to the premiere. I can come to your premiere? Of course. Bill loves children. He'll be so impressed that I've taken an interest in my sweet, young, half-witted niece. <laughs> now you're thinking. Come along, dear. You don't know what this means to me. I know every movie you've ever made. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I don't know every movie I've ever made. Well, I do. Your first part was as a harem dancer in Siren of Babylon. And then after that, you were the human sacrifice in Peg and Lullaby. Those were in 1918. Uh, we don't need the year, dear. <laughs> then you were the Indian squad who gets killed for stealing white babies and blood on the prairie. Tell me, Peggy, have you ever been to a stag party? Why, Aunt Lily, of course I've never been to a stag party. Well, dear, that's one movie she doesn't know about. <laughs> Shut up, mother. Exactly. <laughs> Calm down, Con. He'll be here. Oh, the picture's practically over. Oh, there are plenty of reasons he might have missed the picture. Fog at the airport, traffic, intellectual standards. <laughs> I was so looking forward to sharing this night with him. Instead, I'm sitting in there with my mother, my secretary, and my niece. What actress attends a premiere with three women as her date? Marlena Dietrich? <laughs> You are. Oh, I was getting worried. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello, Thelma. Bill. We stopped to refuel in London. I found out Mahatma Gandhi was in the airport and willing to be interviewed. It meant taking a later flight, but... Oh, I understand completely. You could hardly pass up Mahatma. I mean, I haven't seen that many foreign films myself, but I understand she's very good. <laughs> yep, I'm back in Hollywood, all right. Thelma, you don't want to miss a surprise ending. Don't you want to see who's been out to get me all night? From what I've seen so far, I'd say the screenwriter. <laughs> You're just confused. My God, look at you. You get more beautiful every year. Oh, you are just being kind. Oh, no, I mean it. I'm sure. Really? You don't have to lie to me, Bill. How many times do you want to hear it? Just once more. You're stunning. Thank you. I meant to write to you last year and tell you how much I enjoyed your book. You read my book. You look surprised. It's just that in five years of marriage, I don't remember you reading anything except magazines, and then only when you were on the cover. Well, I've become quite a lover of fine literature. I read your book in one sitting, adored it. Oh, good. Because I was afraid you might think a certain character was based on you. Really? Which one? Which one did you think? <clears throat> well... Now you'll read it. <laughs> you mustn't tease me, Bill. I'm feeling very vulnerable tonight. You don't know what it's like to watch yourself in a thriller. Sitting there, seeing maniacs lunge at you from the shadows. Oh, I think about it and I start shivering. Literally shivering. As though cold. Oh. <laughs> Gloria, there was a reason I wanted to see you tonight. Oh? Yes. You, you, see, I've been on my own for quite a while now. And Yes. And I've decided that it's time that I admit. You were wonderful, Aunt Gloria. I haven't been so terrified since your last tax audit. <laughs> Gloria, what a picture. Mona. Excuse me, darling. No actress dares ignore the call of Mona. 
Oh, Mona, I loved your column today. What wonderful scoops. Oh, speaking of scoops, wasn't that your ex-husband you were talking to? Yes, or should I say my soon-to-be ex-ex-husband? Oh, really? Darling! Doreen! Well, Doreen, what do you think of Gloria's first thriller? It's one of the most horrifying things she's ever done. <laughs> Bill, how about a comment for my column? I hear you are a one lucky boy. Oh, yes. They're making a movie of my book. I'm doing the script. Oh, I mean you and Gloria. I saw you two just now. Oh, hold on. With all the movie stars Gloria dates, I doubt she has much use for me. Besides, I'm getting married in a few months to a girl back east. Is that right? Well, I'm sure that's not juicy enough for your column. Oh, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> the last time I accept a ride from W.C. Fields. <laughs> my, my. The depression's been good to you. Well, fans do expect stars to live rather grandly. I really only built this for my public. Ask them over sometime, they'll fit. <laughs> Champagne? Sure. Don Perignon, 1926. The year we were married. It's a good year. Say, this looks familiar. Yes, there's the crack. Oh, by the way, this scar healed up very nicely. <laughs> Poor darling. The minute that ashtray left my hand, I regretted it. You too, huh? <laughs> but remember, after the fight we made up, we laughed about it for weeks. I had you in stitches. About ten of them, as I recall. Hello! Oh, mother, home from the party so soon. Yes, I know I said I'd be staying a while, but as you can see, our sweet little niece is a little bit stinko. Mother, how could you? But it's not my fault. I went to the powder room for five minutes, and when I came back, there was Errol Flynn pouring it down her throat with a ladle. I met Errol Flynn, Aunt Gloria. He made me feel like a grown-up for the first time. Before I met him, I felt like a little girl. Apparently, so did he. <laughs> well, I'm impressed. At what? You. The Gloria I knew would never have dreamed of letting her niece come to a premiere. I'm not that same Gloria. I've changed, Bill. I really have. And may I say, for the better. Thank you. Say, your mom's looking great. Isn't she? Oh, she's so pleased you've moved back to Hollywood. Whoa. I haven't moved. I'm here for three months, period. Just long enough to make sure my novel about political corruption makes it to the screen without any songs in it. <laughs> then it's straight home. See, I plan to be back by oh, fall. Oh, plans. Because... We plan and plan, but we never really know what lies ahead, do we? <laughs> if anybody should know that, it's us. But We go through life thinking we're in control, but we're not. There are always forces at work on us, strange forces that pull us toward the destiny they've chosen for us. A destiny we can't really see. Just like the poor butterfly can't see the spider web until, until it's, it's trapped. trapped. I'm like that butterfly, only I'm glad to be trapped. Do you hear me? Glad. <laughs> Save me a sunset, 1935. You never let me get away with anything, do you? Mm -hmm. It's what I always hated about you. But it's what I always loved about you, too. That sooner or later you'd make me be myself. That's why I'm so glad that you've come back. Hmm. Gloria, I shouldn't have done that. Nonsense! You just shouldn't have done it so quickly. Gloria, something I have to say to you. Oh, you writers and your words. Words aren't necessary between us. No, no, no. Some words, believe me, are necessary. Very necessary. Well, then say them, darling. I'm engaged. Oh? Yes. Yes, to a, a young lady back in New York. I, I'm sorry, I, I would have mentioned it earlier. I just had no idea you'd be upset. Upset? <laughs> Why, 
why should I be upset? You come slithering back into my life after six years. You lie to me. You try to seduce me. All I wanted was for us to be friends again. We're working at the same studio. We'll be seeing each other on the lot. <laughs> seeing each other? You'll be in the writer's building, darling. If you want to see me, you'll need binoculars. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Gloria. You really have changed. You develop this down-to-earth Will Rogers kind of quality. Just answer me one thing. That speech you recited with me, I made that picture three years after we divorced. I know it by heart because it took 19 takes. <laughs> What's your excuse? I'm a fan. Always was, always will be. See you around the lot. <laughs> oh, my poor baby, what happened? Oh, mother, he dumped me again. <laughs> oh, my poor darling. And I was so real at the end, too. <laughs> darling. You'll find a way to get him back. Honesty's lovely, but it isn't the only tactic there is. No, it's hopeless, Mother. No, it's not. I saw his eyes tonight. He wants you. He just doesn't like you very much. Guess you've seen the reviews, huh? Bill just broke her heart again. Sorry to hear it. Can I get you anything? A drink? A sailor? Come now, darling, let's see a little smile. How can I smile? What have I got left to live for? Aunt Gloria, I think I drank too much. Didn't take Miss Idaho long to go native, did it? <laughs> Poor child. Don't worry, I'll take her to bed. No, no, I want her to stay. Peggy, come sit next to Aunt Gloria. You know, Peggy, I was a little annoyed when you showed up here yesterday. But now I can see it was a good thing. I'd become too swept up in a world of glamour and make-believe. It's a pretty world, Peggy, but a hollow one. <sighs> oh, look, she's fallen asleep in my arms. And do you know why? It's because she feels safe there. That must be it. <laughs> Wake up, dear. Oh. I'll take you upstairs and tuck you into a comfy bed with fresh satin sheets. There's a real good idea. <laughs> and you can stay here just as long as you like. After all, we're family. And family is all that matters. I suppose you probably think this is just another of my passing fancies. I think it's the loveliest thing you've ever done, and I'm very, very proud of you. Thank you, Mother. Hello? It's Weinstock. He thinks he's got a director for your next picture. I'll take it in my room. <laughs> There, there, lady. You have a nice cup of tea and calm yourself. Calm? How can I be calm when my little Joey is out there somewhere on the moors? Don't you fret now. Miss Tablelands will find him. You can't expect me to just sit here and do nothing. Not when I can see the storm clouds gathering. Which of our horses is the fastest? Fastest? That would be turpitude. Saddle him up. Oh, you can't ride him, Mum. He's a demon, he is. I said saddle him up. As you wish, Mum. My boy needs me!